<laughs> Lights, camera, action, go! Hi, I'm Carl the Drum Guy. So you've decided to go and live in the woods for a week. This is Pagan Festival Survival Guide number 101. 102 is still in the works, that's later. <laughs> okay, I cannot emphasize the first part of this. Actually, let me hang, hand out the... I got a handout... Everybody got a pencil? There's a bucket of pencils there. Um, if you want to take notes, there'll be several bullet points that will come up during the discussion, things I'm going to show you. Yeah. And this this will help you get ready, yeah. if not, to remember absolutely everything you should bring with you. Yeah. This will at least make sure that the things that you do forget are not actually super necessary to where you're going. <laughs> you're gonna. These will be the very much essentials this is the baseline of what you will need when going to a pagan festival and a little bit of an understanding of how the rules are somewhat different from ordinary camping when you go to a pagan festival. <laughs> okay, and there's, there's, there's sky clad things that could happen, but that's, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Okay, first, very first, number one, uh, you can write this down if you want, but it kind of goes without saying, planning, planning, planning. And I will say it again, planning. Um, if you know months ahead of time that you're going to be going to a specific event or even in a couple of weeks, that if you set aside, what I found works for us, if you set aside a couple of hours each day or even just an hour every day up until you're ready to go, make a pile by the door of stuff that has to go with you and get into the car. Um, but that's where the planning comes from, because all that, that, you know, it'll be bags, it could be empty, uh, a cooler that's empty becomes a suitcase, <laughs> okay, because you're not going to need the food and water until you get to where you're going. Um, that's just a little hint, but the planning, planning, planning. Uh, first part of the planning stage is that you got to ask yourself the question of what will I need? What, what will I absolutely have to have with me? To survive this wondrous expedition with my family of choice to the woods. Um, things like sunscreen, bug repellent, you know, stuff stuff you would take with you heading anywhere. Um, but here's here's a big one. And I got talking to a couple of the organizers, a few of the things that we've gone to. There have actually been people taken out of festivals we've been at from dehydration and starvation because they didn't sign up for the food plan. They didn't know where to get food and they forgot to bring anything with them. So right at the top of the list before anything else gets in the car, make your plan for food and water. Um, you can always find lodging. You can always find, you can find a lot of other things with food and water. If you don't have that with you at the site, you're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> I mean, even if it's just like things like this, pretzels, ramen, this makes a really good meal if you mix it with a can of uh, Campbell's sirloin burger. <laughs> Spam! It lasts forever. Just That's throw right. it in the bottom of your to-go bag and forget about it. That way you'll have something. You know, you always want to have something. Um, but from from what I've seen, that's that's if you sign up for the food the food plan for most of the festivals we like to go through, um, they take good care of you. So that, I mean, that's worth the investment. You can spend a couple of hundred bucks over five days feeding yourself every day, or you can buy whatever their food plan is. And trust me, you'll gain weight on it. <laughs> they will they keep you fed. Okay. Um, moving from food and water uh, versus, you know, bring versus buy. I touched on that. Uh, clothing. Find out what the weather is going to be like where you're going. Uh, we found this out the hard way at <laughs> the last FPG we went to. <laughs> first night we were there, got down to like 38. <laughs> that was unexpected. That was, it came out of nowhere. Uh, the rest of the week was okay, uh, but that first night was bad. We didn't bring um, sweaters or long sleeves because we figured, you know, we're rolling into summer, late spring. But uh, just make sure to check the local weather wherever you're going. This way you don't get caught out by rainstorms or unexpected flooding or snow. <laughs> it's happened. There have been places of windstorms. We heard stories of people losing their whole kit to uh, micro tornadoes and stuff because it just 
picked up their stuff and threw it into the lake. So there's there's a summer pagan festival in Colorado. In the daytime is summer. It's Colorado. It's eighties, nineties. It's hot. Mm -hmm. But at night, it's in the thirties. Yeah, yep. it's every single night. Especially, Absolutely. Yeah. If you don't yeah. check, you're gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. Two wardrobes. Yeah. Pack for all the seasons, all at once. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, is that good? Warm yeah. sleeping bag. <laughs> Make sure, you know, wherever, whatever your festival area is that you're going to, whatever park, campground, whatever it is, um, there will also be some critical items you want to bring with you. Now, these include things like uh, medications. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but anybody who approaches a certain age above 50, you're probably on blood pressure. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Not like aspirin or antacids or anything. I'm talking about your prescription meds. Find out how much you're going to need for the whole time plus two because you don't know if you're going to get stuck the day before or the day after wherever you're going. Have a couple extra pills with you. Um, lights, really great. Um, to leave something like this on. If you're going to a nighttime thing, like say you want to go up to the fire circle, which is usually deep into the night, it usually starts around 10 o'clock. Having something like this, as you can tell, that's <laughs> right. Having something like this it's hanging up either inside your tent or near your tent, you're going to know, oh, that's my light, and you'll know exactly how to get on. Yeah, finding your tent after the dark. <laughs> yeah, your tent after dark. That's, that's a good to just have a light, any kind of light will work. But, Make sure so it's going to burn bright for a couple of hours. Yeah, that is a yeah, ridiculously you, you, bright one. You bring your your flashlights with you to get there. Right. You don't think about how am I going to find it when I get back. Yep. You know? yep. Yeah, you can see the fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> Glow sticks are a good option. Um, reflecting tape. Um, just about anything that makes your camp stand out to you. So you're not going to wind up like what happened to our friend Tommy. Waking up in the wrong tent. <laughs> what all the wrong light? Uh, then that's on you. <laughs> there's, there, there. I'll, Make there's, it unique. There's a part of this chapter that's going to go go into uh, overindulgence. <laughs> <laughs> so how to take, how to be safe at the at these. This is all about being safe and surviving your your first ever trip to a pagan festival. Because like I said, they are a little different. Um, it'll be family of choice. Everybody there at these things will be willing to help you out. But there are things that you cannot ask for, things like toiletries. If you forgot to bring soap and toilet paper, that's on you. Uh, most people share shampoos a lot of times in the in communal showers in these places. Um, I'm talking about rustic camping where it's usually a hastily constructed area of pallets with wood. So it's pseudo secure, so you can't be seen. But uh, normally you'll find bottles of shampoo, but don't trust that. Always bring the little travel sizes with you. Um, we got lucky at our last one on the give take table. There was a couple of bars of soap. <laughs> I was very happy for that. I like to take a shower every night. Uh, that's another big thing with these trips, um, depending on where you are and, and what the weather is. Um, along with your medications, your medicinals, your first aid stuff, uh, Pack enough deodorant. <laughs> Not everybody. This will. this is more of a PSA than, <laughs> than anything else, but just just make sure you don't offend. Uh, now, after after the lights and batteries and your first aid and your deodorant and your medications, um, this was a big one that came up at, at even this last one and the one before it. Water, water, water. Mm -hmm. Um. People are having fun, having a good time, drinking during the day, doing whatever other recreational stuff. They forget to drink water. That was like the number one complaint was, oh, I'm all crampy. Have you drank anything today? Give them a Gatorade and tell them to go sit in the shade. Uh, you know, there's water, water, just water all the time. Because you're outdoors most of the time. Sometimes you're in hot, hot areas. And in Florida, we have unique humidity areas where some of the state, you could be sweating a ton and not even know it. You could be losing water just like in states like Arizona. It evaporates as soon as it comes out of your skin. So you don't know you're drying up like a prune. So once again, water, 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 all the time. Um, another thing that I noticed when we walked into the, the food hall, we got 
we're kind of spoiled. <laughs> our our group goes to the camp Kiwanis campgrounds and they have a it's Boy Scout camp will probably be the easiest way to describe it. They got a uh, they got a mess hall, they got cabins, they have showers, they have all this stuff that you know because it's a youth camp. But uh, in the mess hall, usually in the mornings, there will be a coffee station set up. Now, people will be nice enough sometimes to run the coffee pot, um, sometimes not, but. Most of the time, it's either a cured machine or a single drip thing. Um, what I suggest, rather than waiting for the place to supply styrofoam cups, get one of these. It's a big steel tumbler with a nice solid lid. This way you can, if you're doing instant coffee, then all you need is hot water. So you can just fill this up, put your coffee, your creamer, everything in it, then just come and get the hot water from the tea kettle in the mess hall, and you're good to go. Or get your regular coffee, but this way you're not wasting 6,000 cups during the, you know, because most people like myself, sometimes I'll drink two. I'll drink one of these, but if it's a little styrofoam cups, I'll drink two of them. And where do those little cups go? Right in the trash. So this also helps with the financial side of what they have to supply. And uh, along with that, get yourself a nice um, metal plate and fork and knife set that just goes into your camping. This way you can eliminate having to take paper plates at every meal. Kind of like the like the military ones where it's like a canteen sets. You could yeah, I saw a few of those. I saw one couple, they bought his and hers matching um lunch trays. One was pink, one was blue. Ah, and they had cute. cups and, and everything that matched. So yeah, that's a way to go. And a lot of times the places appreciate that because of the the, the less stuff they gotta bring in means the less stuff they gotta pack out. So you always want to want to go for a zero sum on on what you're having to throw away. Mm -hmm. Okay, bring good copy. Oh, the other thing, um, a lot of people don't realize this when you're going camping. The power of this stuff, mm -hmm. paper money. Uh, that coffee station inside a lot of times, and, and almost every time, without exception of every festival we've been to, is a um, charitable donation kind of a thing. They, you know, they don't pass the hat, but they leave a little love offering basket. So that's why you want to take a couple of bucks each morning and throw it in there because that coffee doesn't pay for itself. You know, it's got to come from somewhere. Um, also, uh, if you find yourself in a true survival situation and you need something to light a fire with, you tear this stuff up, this stuff burns like gasoline. And once it's lit, it woof. It's got the oils of a thousand names. Yep. It yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's Hopefully that's all it is. <laughs> and I learned it. I learned in school if you cover it in vinegar and light it on fire, it will catch on fire, but it won't burn the dollar. Yeah, it'll burn off the vapor because the paper nature of the paper. But yeah, that but it? that is this is this is a tool. Yeah, that like sixth grade. Don't think of this as cash. This is a tool for goodwill amongst your fellow coffee drinkers. <laughs> it also patches bicycle tires. They really can't put it, it inside. Yeah. yeah, you put it inside. Yeah, yep. it yep. works quite well. Absolutely. See, and that would be great if you went to a place where everybody was riding around on bicycles. That was another I found on the internet. If if you can afford it and want to have storage space for it for you, a lot of a big suggestion is a foldable three wheel bicycle. Um, apparently that's like the greatest way to get around festivals. I. Ricky uses one sometimes, and, and we have a friend, he's he's big in the festival scene. He goes everywhere on his little scooter, and if he can't use the scooter because it's gas powered, he's got a three-wheel bike. <laughs> and uh, money comes in handy, too, if somebody's running up to the store to make an ice, ice run. run. Yes. Beer run. Not everybody takes plastic. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that way you can say, I got five on it, and then they go. Good. <laughs> and you the, bar the fold up bike was a three-wheeler? I've seen two-wheeler. Yeah, Hold so up. his is a three-wheeler. Three the, well, the back, cool. the back cool. comes together, and then it swings around, so all three tires line up, and mm -hmm. there's a rack you can put in your van, and it just hooks mm -hmm. right into it. Very but cool. that, once again, that's the whole storage thing. Personally, I would put it on the roof. So, <laughs> uh, Let's see. Plates, utensils, non-disposable. We talked about that. Um, this is a thing we just discovered, and we had it set up at... Belting, uh, the hand washing station. That was really cool. That was it's. It uses mm -hmm. a five gallon water jug. Um, you can go on Amazon and buy them. It's a nozzle that screws on, 
and it's either a lift. It, ours is a lift handle, right? I yeah, it's it a lift. You lift it, it and it popped open. the water jets out, and it's a great hand washing thing. You use any water in it. It just makes sure that people know this is for hand washing and not for drinking. Yeah. yeah. And it was really it's cool. The same. Yeah, our friend, our friend who's the masseuse, every time she got done with a with a client, she came back there and gave herself a bath with it. It was a really great thing. So we got one. Um and I cannot uh swear by these enough. Dude wipes. Dude wipes. <laughs> I should own stock in this company. <laughs> these are great for everything. You can wash your entire body with these and be just as fresh as stepping out of a shower. It'll feel a little grimy, but they work. They Better keep than nothing. Yeah. If you if you decide to eschew the deodorant. <laughs> these are these are the fragrance free run ones. So those are we good. also have cool mint. Yeah, cool yeah. Mint is nice too. Uh, baby wipes, soap, any kind of soap, hand soap, spray soap, whatever soap you want to bring. Soap is necessary. Somebody's got a hand up. Oh, Shine raised her hand. Go ahead, Shine. Oh, thank you. I want to know. What the difference between dude wipes and regular wipes are? I've seen them in the supermarket and in other stores, and I know people that swear by them, but I don't know what the difference is. It's just a heavier gauge of towel. They're, okay. they're bigger mm -hmm. and thicker and heavier. They carry more soap and and uh, fluid with them, and they're they're made for scrubbing. They're not for babies. No, for babies. no, these, oh, they're okay. so I call them dude wipes, <laughs> but they're gentle. They're made for a man, but gentle enough for a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and also can be used in an event of emergency as a fire starter. And oh, everything can start a fire. <laughs> Enough about that. <laughs> one one thing about soap, if you take a bar of soap in advance and uh, just a vegetable peeler, you can shave it off. It works very, very well. Mm. Because then you can take out just what you need. That's a great it. idea. I, I have... You put a little sachet into that in your tent, too. Yeah. Use, like, uh, your spring. Yeah. Yeah. I have um, um, a packet of mm -hmm. soap that's, you know, dry right. soap. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the like the sheets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the sheets. Oh, yeah. And Those they're really great. Cool. And there's also a, it's a camp, a Castile camp soap. Yeah. The peppermint. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to, you want to make sure you rinse it all off or you'll know it. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> it is like highly biodegradable. The things like Hidba Cleanse, the waterless yeah, with the water they use shampoo. In hospitals, they spray yep. you and then mm -hmm. it just wipes off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those, Those are, are all good. Yeah, I saw them a couple of times. They're in the bathroom. And hand sanitizer, um, because <laughs> at these festivals, everybody's touchy feely, huggy grabby. <laughs> uh, it just means everybody likes to shake hands and hug and give the whole air kiss and all that. Um, that's where the sanitizer comes in. Not approved by any means. I don't mind people touching each other, I don't mind people touching me. I just want to have sanitizer because I know we live in the real world where there's things called germs. <laughs> Nobody wants to come we home. We should all know that by now. Nobody right. wants to come home from festival with a nose friend. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I had written here baby wipes, soap, hand sanitizer, because not all festivals have showers. That's why I'm kind of hammering this keep yourself clean. Because it's hard to sit in a sweat lodge when, before you walk in, the people you're going to walk in there with, you don't want to. <laughs> Is that when the nose plug comes in? Yes, that's when you take the the the, the prov conveniently provided tube of Crest toothpaste. Stick it up and snod. You go like this. Or some Vicks. Or some Vicks. Yeah. That was that was um, Grey Ghost Hawks go to Vicks. Yeah. But he said it was funny. They would, they, this is the thing about that. If you do a sweat lodge, once again, a small PSA embedded in this, you will go in stinky. You will come out cleaner than you've ever been. Yeah. There will be no smell. So. <laughs> Set all that toxins out. Yep. Mm -hmm. People say that's not a thing, but I don't. I totally believe it is a thing. Oh, it is. I definitely. Know you, it. I do. Definitely. You can tell. You can tell a vegetarian from a meat eater by the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I get to meet sweats. Okay. <laughs> now, sometimes you have people that vend 
So some of these rules wouldn't really apply, but a lot of them do. I mean, this this is just to get you an idea of what you need to do to survive these, these events. But if you're not vending, there'll be a lot of downtime between going to who you're going to talk to and, and the things you want to see. Um, that's where entertainment comes in. Things like that. Uh, in our particular group, Cards Against Humanity is a big thing. <laughs> that, was a that was a fun day. It is. And it... Uh, at these festivals, just be careful because they can turn into drinking games very fast. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll get to that eventually. But I like things like this, the Magic 8-Ball. Am I going to have big fun at this next festival? Yes! <laughs> and you will survive. Yep, this is... Just yes! Says yes. <laughs> See, that's, what, that's what's great about those. What's, what's a good one? Will I win the lottery when I come back from this? Oh. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't say which lottery. Buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which uh, lottery. I think we'll have wind up winning you, you the Nigerian first scratch off. Okay. <laughs> it, it depends on which lottery. You win. That's right, the whole... It's a jury pool lottery. Yes, yeah, so we want to... <laughs> 31, never mind. The lottery of your dreams. <laughs> well, I picked the correct Mega Ball numbers this week. <laughs> As I see it, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Magic Meatball. <laughs> the honor taking at us. For every time you get a positive answer, you have to take a drink. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> I've seen the um, uh, spider has a big bubble thing that he does. Yes. He has a the bucket of soap. Yep. And he has these two poles with string across and he and he puts the string, the rope, and then he goes whoosh and big bubble. huge bubbles whoosh. come flying out of there. Yep. And all the kids, I think he does that with the stinky people. You are moving into the bubble. the bubble. Yeah. Embrace the bubble. Embrace the bubble. Put yeah. your and arms up, it. make sure it gets in all the crevices. <laughs> So you're a yes, contestant on Dancing in the Hole. <laughs> but he is, uh, that's a lot of fun. It is. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like that hula hoops and kites. Kites. Mm -hmm. We, haven't, we yeah. should bring a kite the next time because mm -hmm. it gets pretty windy. Unless there's lots of trees. And yeah. uh, frisbees and whatever you yeah. do. Pack and sack. Giant <laughs> so. badminton. We have a set of those in the garage somewhere. The shuttlecocks are about that big. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it very impossible to miss. <laughs> okay, if you so miss your drink, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, no, it's the shuttlecock becomes a drinking glass. <laughs> All right, so that, that covers entertainment. Let's see. Uh, I don't think to play music on. Yeah, it's a good idea to bring toys and games or books for the downtimes. Um, Although speaking to each other about the classes is highly entertaining and strengthens community. Just While drinking. While drinking. <laughs> we don't and then you won't even place. remember it at that point. <laughs> now, this, this next one, it's going to sound, I'm, I'm trying to word it so it doesn't sound ew, but I actually quite enjoy this particular piece of equipment uh, because I don't like getting up and walking across a freezing cold dew covered field at three o'clock in the morning to find a bathroom. And it's an okay. intent potty. Um that little three-legged thing. thing. Yeah, it's a little tiny commode. You just pee in it. Um that and a five pound or 20 pound box of kitty litter. And so, then so you you don't have to leave, you know, some some of us I once again, once you reach a certain age. <laughs> You pee three or four or five times a night. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so much more convenient to have it right there. Plus, if you've been to these parties earlier in the evening where you're having the drinking games, it's very convenient for it to be right there. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And it's they're not expensive. They don't smell. They're very easy to maintain. Once you get that kitty litter, if they if, if kitty litter can cover over kitty pee. <laughs> It can <laughs> There's actually a new product out now. It's a it's a bag. It basically it's the same thing, but you use a five gallon bucket with the potty seat. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's a bag, and once you add liquid, any liquid to the bag, it becomes a gel. 
Mm -hmm. Also oh, traps odor as well. Interesting. Interesting. And of course, you know, you, you like tie it like up it. and throw it away. Yeah, you don't, right. Just tie it up, toss it out. But yeah, I just saw mm -hmm. that recently as a camping hack. Excellent. All right. Another another one wonderful thing that I've noticed that happens at these events. And this is going to lead into the yes, yes, no, no. Um, bringing shareables. Uh, things like alcohol, snacks, your overall knowledge base, um, companionship with the people you're there with. But be careful with that because some people's tolerance of what they put in their snacks might be here and you're down here. <laughs> so just be careful if you're going to share food and snacks like that with people that are unknown to you. Okay, I give you, animals. yeah, well, anything really. Yeah, you can hide stuff in anything. But if you mm. know the people, you've been festivaling them with them for a long time, the odds of that happening are slim. But just be aware that when people share stuff, they might not understand that you either have a low tolerance or just alcohol gets away from you that they or an allergy. Yeah, they're pizza. not. It's not a malicious thing to share. Just be aware. And don't be you're afraid to receiving ask. something. Say, hey, what is this? Just meat or is this just a brownie? Well, you know, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, nobody's right. gonna get offended. No, you're just not at all. Right. <laughs> and don't. Ew, know. I don't want that. No, don't do that. That's and where being celiac is a secret superpower. There you go. Uh, yeah, everybody is. Uh, okay. Everybody's there to coconut have a good too. time. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things have coconut oil in it nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there, there was somebody there who had brownies, and a PSA was made to not eat them because they were way too strong. Something went wrong with the batch, and they just they went. So they put them away, but some of them had gotten into the community. Hmm. I think I know the people that took them too. <laughs> Why are you walking sideways? Yeah. It's okay. Um, that's the, yeah. <laughs> Another survival part. Uh, Situational awareness. It's okay to make festival friends. Sometimes the spirit moves you. You meet a person you have a deep connection with. A lot of marriages and long relationships start at meeting someone at a festival. But this is where the golden rule applies. Because if you don't use the golden rule, you know, treat others how you treat yourself, word about that will get out in the community, and you will get ostracized real quick. But I think it's locked. Top one as well. Let's spin it down. There you go. Hi, <laughs> Hi. That was a cat being let out. <laughs> so two people before her. Uh, yeah, it's just the golden rule applies. We're all here at these events to learn and have fun. Um, but put your self-awareness and understanding of human nature up to level orange when you go to these things. Mm -hmm. That's not saying, oh, you know, look at everybody like a suspect just be aware that you're in a different kind of place when you're at a festival it's a little bit different than like i said in the beginning a typical camping a lot of free spirits a lot of people that don't necessarily understand um how uncomfortable you could be in a situation um so that's when that's when you're your own best barometer if you are walking into a group or you see somebody and you get it eh, you go the other way just walk away like if you're in if, but if somebody yeah goes up, yep. like, mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. do all kinds and watch your energy like, too, around yeah. those people like, because they're all fires yeah yeah, yeah. 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 wear your handkerchief they may they may not be meaning to intentionally harm you but there's things that will drain your energy and feed them like you said Psychic vampire is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, Wear your kerchiefs on your head. Yeah. And then, and you want to leave the place as clean as you found it, or even cleaner if possible. You know, nobody likes to go to a place and funk it all up for the next group of people. I know we've, we've not seen that. We've been lucky that when we go, it's usually pretty well taken care of during the whole time. But everybody will know that Pagan's festival there, and mm -hmm. we don't want... To yeah, leave we them anything to say. Nope. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's better. It's left better than when they found it. Yes. A lot of times it is. We actually cleaned it up more than more than what was there. A lot of places are happy to have pagan festivals for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, another big thing I've I found while while doing the research for this was um 
time seems to get away from people at festivals. Um, <laughs> it just means like you you get to talking to somebody who's really interested or really interesting about a certain thing, and then you missed what you wanted to go talk about. <laughs> Sometimes that can be good. You may have you may have gotten more information sitting down talking to your friend than you did going to workshop. You missed. Yeah, but budget your time accordingly. Uh, you want to allow for huh? Set a timer basically. Pretty much, yeah. Any any way that you can remember, oh, well, I need to be here at three o'clock. Or, oh, we got to be packed out by 4 p.m. Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, but budget your time because most camps take two to three hours. If you're a vendor, it can take up to four or six, depending on what you bring. So make sure you allot that if, depending on what you're doing. Give yourself enough time to get out by the time they want you to get out. Um, it's nice to, uh, to when you're in your tent at night to be reading the schedule for the next day yes. and make a plan you know what you mm -hmm. want to see and when what we want to go to and what's on at the same time mm -hmm. we're, we're already looking at mystic south aren't we how <laughs> <laughs> my entire mr self plan <laughs> oh there was another thing i wanted to mention about um with your um medicinals so like i said it Simple first aid kit. You can get these at Walmart. They're like 10 bucks. Um, it's a Coleman family medical kit. Uh, if something happens to you that you can't fix it with what's in this little box, you're going to the hospital anyway. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is just for cuts, scrapes, pokies. And I cannot endorse this item enough. With the bug bite pen? It's after bite. I don't know if you Ooh, can. Oh, after bite, yeah. After bite. I love that stuff. I've oh, used that so many things. years. I also, yeah. <laughs> this is also, um, I also learned too, that I also put inside your um, first aid kit, since we're on this topic. Mm -hmm. For us, I also put a maxi pad, not just for females, but it worked for me when, you know, my scar burst open and then like it was everywhere. It's a giant band-aid, basically. It really yeah. was. And everybody was just it. like, how did you think of that? And I was like, well, it works for the other things. So yeah. I'm like, natural, natural, natural I'm like, plotting factor. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, you know, and it was Make so much easier than a band aid because then I didn't go through 50 band aids. Okay. I went through one or two maxi beds a day. This is yeah. another thing that I brought in. They can absorb blood. It exactly. goes along with the uh, after white stuff. stuff. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Citronella oil. You really mm -hmm. don't yeah. want to get bit by anything. Coach yourself in this, like every couple hours, you put it elbows, back of the neck, back of the knees, ankles, or just like me, just wear completely covered clothing all the time. The other one is Deep Woods Off. This is the Sportsman. It's waterproof, so you won't sweat it off. But it is 100% neat, so it's got quite a smell. Um, but nothing will bite you. This is like basically walking around with a tent over your body. This keeps everything away. Citronella does as well. But that... Those are must-haves. And here in Florida, any time of year, you've got to have either citronella or deep woods off because the mosquitoes will carry you away. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then we'll get a snack off. And may I make a comment if you are planning on bringing your own food? Uh -huh. Absolutely. Um, so if you're planning on bringing your own food, say you're planning on grilling, make sure you think through everything that you're going to need in order to cook that food onto the grill. Mm -hmm. Talking can opener, how you're going to... If you yes. want like a, or, a, a a mitt or something to be able to take things on and off mm -hmm. the grill so you don't burn yourself and need the and, first aid kit. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, they also make, because I know MREs and like my, because my brother's in the military, they make um, the MREs, but they also have these little, if they almost call them like little, almost like little stove tops. And they're like this big. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is pull something from underneath it and it heats yeah, up. Yeah, it's a thermal pack. Super, yep. Super, super hot. And yep. all you do is take whatever you were going to cook on it and you stick it on top. Mm -hmm. And yep. then it cooks it and then it heats it up and then you can just eat it. And you don't have to worry about where am I going to find my heat source. Yeah. Exactly. Well, some, some of the MREs, you just you snap a thing inside yeah. and you squish it. Yeah. And then the whole bag yeah. heats up and you just eat and it. Right the and, they, and they've come a long way since like... The yeah, you, can, you can keep your dishes in. I'm not touching that stuff. But <laughs> if you bring your little grill, then yes. you can have s'mores afterwards. True. Yes. True. Yes. And if you, if we have a a, a Dutch oven, 
that we put on the ground and make a little fire in it. It's our little fire pit. Mm -hmm. And people will come by and just sit and you'll you'll collect a, a drum circle or a or a s'mores party. Uh, <laughs> and they'll find you if you yep. just light See the fire. They're looking at their tire. They can't find it. <laughs> 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 they have <laughs> have food that and like s'mores that you can just share. Next to the people that had the s'mores. Okay. <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. But make sure you really think through your meals. Like you're gonna eat more than you think you're gonna eat. Yeah, yes. you're gonna get That's hungry. So really outside. make sure. You're planning ahead, plan your meals ahead of time. And your fuel. And your fuel. Mm -hmm. And make sure you have enough fuel for your meals and make sure of everything you're going to need to do your meals. Because you don't want to get there and be like, oh, shit, I have a can and no can open. Exactly. Yeah. Um, corkscrew, too. That's another one. That corkscrew. Everybody, winds up. Somebody always needs one. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. find out you brought a propane that, that, on the propane bell. Oh. oh exactly. Yeah. I That's find it interesting. First. I mean, you're talking about plan that you said plan three times. Once again, planning, planning, planning. <laughs> lists. I start making lists. lists. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Three weeks out, mm -hmm. start making lists. Yeah. And put things by the door. Mm -hmm. And will, you will always forget something. something. Just hopefully it'll be at the bottom of the list. So that or something bad. that you can buy locally once you get yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And it's not yeah. like the camera. <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's a Publix or a Walmart on every corner in Florida. You can't really <laughs> yeah. get too far away from something, yeah. you know. But if these, if you're in the habit of, of really preparing, then you could go to Colorado mm -hmm. for a thing and or wherever when it's 100 miles out. Mm -hmm. And then you can survive the weekend without too much damage. Yeah, that was. You had to take over. Yes, yeah, like a thirty-minute drive thing. Tarps and rope. Yeah, tarps, tarps and rope and mm -hmm. good tent stakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, those are things. Um, Mallet coolers. And learn how to tie things down. A lot, of, a lot of people waste space with coolers. They bring a cooler, but they won't bring any of the perishables or anything in it. So it's this big empty space. Now, like I said in the beginning, an empty cooler can become a suitcase or a storage space for dry stuff until you get to where you're going and you're going to put your perishables and your ice in there. Mm -hmm. so that's it. Just doesn't make any sense to me to have a 48 quart void in your in your pack out when okay. you, you All your use that whole space. Well, they yes. also make too now. They make biodegradable coolers too. Mm -hmm. I've seen those. Yeah, the same stuff. These are. So made out of mm -hmm. and you don't have to buy the perishables and the ice mm -hmm. here and schlep it up yeah up there they yeah. have a there's a public there. or a Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> 25 30 minutes out you find out whatever's close you load up or and you drive in or yeah there's always something little circle k that was outside of where we were this last time was practically a grocery store <laughs> so <anymore>. yep <laughs> <laughs> that's like a wall okay place. now um, I, I don't really want to end anything, but this is a place where I think, and you'll have to help me out with this. Um, our wonderful friend Medea uh, has this thing that she does at every festival. It's called the Yes, Yes, No, No speech. Um, it's part of opening ceremonies for yep. FPG every year. Yep. And uh, I, I, I remember the fire tender one. If you want to put something into the fire, ask. Yes. Yes. This, this is how she puts it. If you want to put something in the fire, you will ask the fire tender. Yes. And the whole group has to say yes. yes. And she goes through all these things. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And then she ends with. No means no. And she makes us chant it. Mm -hmm. No means no. And so there's got to be a reason for that. Stuff's happened, mm -hmm. and it, I I I like it because it does two things. First of all, if anyone is planning on being a predator that weekend, maybe they'll think twice. Mm -hmm. Or and secondly, if someone is uncomfortable, they will speak up because they know it's a you you you're allowed to speak up. Mm -hmm. And if you see something, say something. The whole community will be behind. Yeah. You will have an instant army. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they want to ostracizing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this has happened. We were at FPG, and sometimes after 10 o'clock at the fire circle, um, it becomes 
adult. Not full adult, not fully sky clad, but topless. And uh, Coven was dancing. And a young man decided that it was that that meant that he could touch. Hmm. Oh, oh, that's enough. Did he die? He, he was, was gone from that festival. Within the hour, he was gone. Mm -hmm. Like his whole whole kit and everything. They right. packed him up and they took him off the property. Mm -hmm. And for anybody who doesn't know what skyclad is, because people don't always know. That's true. It is ritual nudity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. There's varying degrees, but that's what it is. So yep. if you see sky clad listed on the program, be prepared. Be prepared. No, that's be right. prepared for and that is not an invitation that, for physical it's not, contact. Right. No, because that's not that's never a, it's not a uh, promiscuous correct. it's sky clad, mm -hmm. it's spiritual. Yeah. And if the if you see in the program that after 10 o'clock the drum circle is sky clad, then you know what to expect. And it doesn't mean that you have to be. No, it just means that people might be. People might be. Um, there also may be some big teddy bears and and puppy dogs, and because they're they exactly. have those full onesies. I was wishing for one of those when it was oh. thirty. Oh, when it got down to that <laughs> the first night. Oh. The thing, yeah, it looks yeah. like you'll see unicorns walking around. Furries, <laughs> right? Yeah. Old <laughs> be old hands yeah. skipping through the woods. And... <laughs> That's That's fun. Fun. Yep. it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful experience, mm -hmm. but it can be off-putting if you are not expecting it. Mm -hmm. See a naked person with a unicorn head. <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm done with this drum circle. I'm going to bed. It's like I'm going to point me towards the light. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to become a moth now and go towards the light. Oh, and speaking of the drum circle, it goes until morning. Mm -hmm. The drummers work. They drum in shifts. 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 Yep. And the drumming goes till morning so i bring some earplugs because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when i'm running out of sleep because i got to be up to open my booth at nine o'clock mm -hmm. and so you know about 10 o'clock i want to go to sleep mm -hmm. so um those ear those earplugs are really great they are they, i use them the second still night kind of hear the drumming but you know it's not oh. and then, then at that point it's almost like putting a little body to sleep yeah mm -hmm. then you got white noise instead of Instead of your head. <laughs> yeah. Instead of white headache. Yeah. And when you go to the drum circle, water. Water. Lots of water. Yes. You'll be it's drumming and dancing around a very large heat source. You'll get caught up in the fervor and then wake up in an ambulance. Dehydration. Yeah. Drink water. Our little um, um, altars. Oh, yes. That's another way to. To yes. make sure that Traveling you can find your tent is to um, create an altar or a sacred space around your tent. Make it your own. Which mine has. And on that note, make sure that you you like take some time to walk around and like memorize the routes. Right. Memorize like where your tent is, where our other landmarks during are during the daylight. During the daylight, <laughs> and where and learn tent poles are. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wherever there might be hazards, like tent poles or large Tank trees, trail. low hanging branches that want to hug you with your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I've never. I've well, never before we got the standing tent, that's a good thing to bring up about the tent stakes. Um, what I saw at this last one. Uh, Remember, we use the we use the pool noodles in the corner of our ten by ten tents that keeps the rain from building up on the roof and causing it to buckle. Mm -hmm. You just bend it in a U shape and stuff it up in the corner. These people had split them longitudinally and put them mm -hmm. on the ropes of That's the end good. and put yeah. uh, reflective tape on them and had a little light on the ground at the base of each stake oh, as their yeah, ropes. It was a big tent ones. and the ropes went out, you know, yeah, good you eight feet away. That's yeah. a good idea. Yep, yeah. and it. You could see everything. It's like, oh, yes. perfect. Nobody tripped over that one. But all four of the tents around it, people were falling over left and right. That's a cultural distraction, is what I think. Yeah. And like and like um like I've never been to a pagan festival, but growing up, my grandparents used to take us to Disney World and mm -hmm. we used to do the camping. 
Oh, and it, was like a, it, it was basically a family reunion every year, every year because we would just take the entire extended family and just rent one campsite and we had, they had an RV. So we just kind of stayed there. We just rented out two campsites with two RVs back to back. And then you had like this whole big area with picnic tables and everything. And one thing I was always taught was if you've got a flashlight, they taught my brothers in the army too, always point it, always have it clipped to your belt belt loop and have it hanging down mm -hmm. because you don't ever want to point it this way because then you can't see what's at your feet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't really need to see what's coming at you this way because you're really more concerned about what's going on your feet down here because if something's charging at you this way but you got something also down here you're going to be you're going to be gone before you know it because you're going to be more concerned about what's at your feet and less what's concerned about what's all over there they do mm -hmm. have um places for rvs at fpg mm -hmm. you'd rather bring them and um, they do have cabins and uh, lodges for an extra charge. Mm -hmm. So, but they 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 sleep six to eight people. So yeah. Maybe you want to get a group together and get mm -hmm. one whole cabin. You know. Because that they will be. Yeah. They had to the, get a cabin. Was it if you had There's a, a cabin ten, price? Yeah. yeah. There's a cabin price. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was cool for one of that we always had one of the Indians. Oh. Yeah. But on the plus side, if you follow all these things that we've uh, we've discussed, you will have a good time. <laughs> but you won't have to you'll have a, a clean, dry, easy to find place to go back to. You have plenty of food and water. You'll be able to relax. Comfortable chair is another big one. I should have put that on there. Um <laughs> Most camp chairs have this X brace mm -hmm. on the front, and I can't really sit in those because it goes right across the mm -hmm. hamstrings on my legs. Um, but you can find ones that are that are collapsible director's chairs that the things are on the sides, so it's just a nice flat place to sit with a pad. And and, and try try to find one that you can carry because you'll probably have to take your own chair to your workshops. Yes. If they're out of sight. Yeah. Workshop dorming circle. They make mm -hmm. those yeah. um, the bags on too. Girl, I'm, I'm sure you probably will yeah, add it to one or two, but fire is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like a way to start a fire, I should say. So a fire maker starts a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fire and making. Um, so what having I, the, like the the match, the, the reusable match. That um, mm -hmm. even just the flint and steel, which you can pick up at like a Coleman's. Or, yeah, I mean, I've, I get a ton of those. In the, yeah, <laughs> out you can there. pick it up at any camping store, yeah. really. But you should always have something and a waterproof something. Well, because you of never that, know what's going to happen. Speaking of that, I one, have little handouts. One thing I was always oh, thought, yeah. where if you this will get everybody started. Is, it's unconventional, but usually they say bring Ziploc baggies. The ones that sit on top. Ziploc yeah. baggies. Oh. But rope, 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 rope. Yeah, this is a little yeah. thing that we put together. It's got uh, a lighter, like you were saying, oh, ability to start a fire. Yep. It's got bubbles because he doesn't love bubbles. <laughs> and sanitizer, my old friend. <laughs> nice. And, oh, it's and it's got a little holder so you can do it right there. Listen, and then you whack it to your belt. Hug somebody, you can immediately sanitize. And this yourself. is like, and this is like, Start yeah. the starter kit for the um hurricane control too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could throw candles in there, you could throw oh, other stuff, like, you have bug spray, because like that, that's what I like about these little concentrates. <laughs> They're so small you can just throw them in with anything. Mm -hmm. The yeah. same thing with the citronella bottle. We could just put that in there. So but any of your any of your absolutely yeah, gotta true. have it things. I would mm -hmm. honestly think about putting up like your medications, yeah. soaps. Yeah. Just make right. a little bag with all of that in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's everything all, could be compartmentalized. Um, in 102, I'll go into how to, you know, get. So you've decided to go. Now you know how to survive. These are the things and how to pack them. So that'll be part 102. Um, just a little preview there of what's going to take Well, the, the bubble holder is cool. The bubble is cool. No, the bubble holder is even better. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, let's see if we can. I... This is cool. But yeah. But didn't I show it to the camera? For those of oh, you Oh, and a little oh. knife. A small yeah, yes, a good a good knife. I always well, have a little knife. You know my you know my rule number nine from Gibbs. Always carry a knife. Always carry a knife. 
Yep. Flavormagic.com. Stay crafty. <laughs> Tiny bubbles. This is what everybody Tiny does. bubbles. <laughs> Send us your address. We'll mail you one. <laughs> Careful. There's a sanitizer in its own little seat. It's got a That's holder. So cool. Yep. I didn't, I didn't know it had a strap on it like that. Oh, there's four of them with straps and four of them with keychains. Okay. My and then sure. fire is always necessary. Oh, you have a yeah. Yes, fire. <laughs> That's a little start for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, sure and, and there's an entertainment. Mm -hmm. You can bring your own drums. Um, anything to make noise and, and music with is yeah, usually always a drum. Yeah, you can get a drum at the drum circle. Yep. They don't provide drums. No, you got to bring them or you can buy them from me when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> No, they don't. They, 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 there's only that one group, uh, Donald, the, the, the teacher. That was his name, Donald's a huge guy, beautiful drum teacher. Um, he's the only one I've seen show up that had three big Tupperware containers full of hand drums for when you came to his classes. If you didn't have your own drum to play, mm -hmm. he would just be like, here, pick one. So they were Remos, so they never went flat. But that's why you have them. <laughs> but yeah, you always, that's rare. You rarely see that. But yeah, you want to bring your own instruments. You really want to be self reliant, is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to get to a place and have to ask the community for everything because it's not going to happen. And, it gets and if it, and if it, if it does happen, um, I don't want to use the word resent. But people might, you know, people people are willing to open their hearts and pocketbooks to help people out of something real, like a fire or something, and then you got wiped out. They did that for a great ghost talk. We passed the hat because he was coming from somewhere and his van caught on fire and he lost everything. Because that's what he does. He goes from place to place in his van and he it burned to the ground. But within three festivals, they bought him a brand new van and trailer. His whole he's got a whole new kit. So we will take care of our own. But it, there has to be... Don't be a mooch. Yeah, don't, like, be, don't be a mooch. <laughs> don't show up with your big mooching bag because it's not going to get full. I was going to say also maybe it would be... It's a little moochy bag. Good thing too to chargers, phone chargers. Uh, yeah, that was, um, I figured with batteries and all that. Because uh, mm. you can get... At, if you really want to go glamping and you don't want to worry about your phone, you don't want to worry about if something has power... Uh, spend a couple of hundred bucks, buy yourself an APC. That's the same thing you would plug a house computer into. Once it's charged, it'll charge up your cell phone like 900 times. I have a bunch of them. Yeah. The little ones, you know. Yeah, those little, the little power cells I, yeah. that are about this big. Okay. Yeah. The thing I'm talking sure about is. I make sure they're all charged. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We, we have one that blows up our queen size bed. <laughs> There's yeah, no clamping. There's no clamping. Not at all. No. We got a ceiling fan. Well, no, oh, that's battery powered. Uh, there are a lot of solar powered um, chargers now. Uh, you Jackery. get them out during the day, and they'll they'll charge themselves. Jackery is the best one on the market right now. Yeah. They're also the most expensive, but um, our friend Sandra, Sandra, mm -hmm. with the, yeah, uh, we have a friend who uses one. It's called the company's called Jackery. Um, it's a 240-hour 240, 240 battery. Wow. Uh, it will power three 15-amp devices for nine hours. So you could have lights, a radio, and a fan going and be good all night long. Uh, then <laughs> in the morning, you put, out your, you put out your two solar panels, and it charges the thing up in six hours. Mm -hmm. So... It's a little bit of an investment. I, I don't want to say prices because I'm not sure, but Jackery is the way to go. Did somebody leave? Um, the Burning Man word for unprepared festival mooch is a sparkle pony from Benin. <laughs> <laughs> sparkle, sparkle pony. <laughs> nice. They just flit from camp to camp and get whatever they can. <laughs> nice. Sparkle pony. <laughs> so yeah, we do. You don't want to be a sparkle pony. I mean, maybe you want to be a sparkle yeah, pony. Maybe you want to be my regular uh, conversation. Trying to send me the laugh emoji. Yep. <laughs> I am finding a way to use that. I'm going to be a fabulava, not a sparkle pony. Be a fabulava, not a sparkle pony. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> 
actually bring enough to share with people. That, that, absolutely. That's what makes you the Babylon. That is the Babylon. Not the circle pony. Because we have shared our snacks and our meat with, with a lot of people. Yeah. Because we always wind up bringing more. Well, you know, when you when you go there as often as we do, and you, you have festival friends that you look forward to seeing, you know, they know we're going to come down with the with the uh, fire and the mead, and they're going to bring out the snacks and you know yeah. and everything else. So, um, yeah, it it just it just makes sense. And it's not so that hard to have an extra bag of marshmallows. And, yeah, you just <laughs> throw an extra bag of yeah. marshmallows. So. Boy, that big bag of Cheetos got some mileage. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of family pack of Cheetos. I didn't realize the five and a half pound bag yeah. Cheetos <laughs> that lasted the entire festival. That was up in the lunch room. I had one chance. Yes. <laughs> one me. We're Chan Tribe. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing that they have. They have the uh, the grill on first night, Wednesday night. Because mm -hmm. most of the people that get there on Wednesday are the vendors and the staff and the people that are there first. And everybody brings um, something, and they have a grill, and we all eat together. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really nice. The stone yeah. stone stone soup grill, or something like that. This is how nice it is. We the this coming this year, their FPG salad will actually be on Halloween. It will be uh, Halloween is a Thursday night, so it'll go from Wednesday to Sunday. So we'll be there the whole day of the dead weekend and um that's also the first weekend of camelot days which we make more money at but we're going to we're going to fpg instead because there's more important things than money more important than money <laughs> 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 right, that? because that's really one of the brightest <laughs> yeah, yeah we have my dad has one of those <laughs> in the backyard so is that harbor freight <laughs> <laughs> it might be <laughs> Ooh. That's beyond bright. I took it to work once, and I was told not to bring it again. Just remember, if you hang that up in your tent, everybody can see what you're doing in your tent. <laughs> awesome. Just letting you know. <laughs> I did discover that our tent is see-through when you press right up against the side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh fabulous. <laughs> you have the light on, you too? <laughs> I'll keep the light on for you. Why <laughs> <laughs> are you standing in front of the light? Bro? You can knock on the light. No, we have. It reminds me of the Austin Powers. That's why I like putting the tarp around the three sides. <laughs> it also keeps it warmer. That's another great thing about a tarp. If you have a decent yeah. tent and you put a tarp over the top and down the sides, yeah, it acts. It acts like an air gap and and keeps you know, nice and toasty inside. But these are that's stuff for like I said. Next, I wanna I wanna hold back a little for next time. <laughs> no, she has no information. <laughs> Does anybody have any always more? Um, yeah. Any more actual experiences, festival experiences? Did someone say more in the chat? Oh, that was I think. Oh, was that from before? Pony. Okay, yeah. that was the sparkle pony thing. It's gonna sound weird, but know your elevation because we are all from a very flat place. <laughs> oh yeah. It okay. makes a big difference. Yeah. No, well, it really does. It's not so much here, the... but if you go out of state somewhere. When we go to visit the kids in Illinois the first couple of days, I'm like dragging. Yeah. Because we're 1,500 feet higher there than we, mm -hmm. what we normally are. It does change everything. It changes your metabolism. You need to drink more water. You just... It also changes Yes, your water. Too. Water, water. Another question. Mm -hmm. Shine, raise your hand. Yep. Yeah, I always bring towels because you never know if you're going to sweat to pieces, if it's hot, or if it's going to yeah. rain or be cold. And, yes. an extra, and a blanket, even if it's supposed to be 100 degrees, bring a blanket. You never know what's going to oh, yeah. happen. And yeah. extra yeah. socks. Always extra socks. Oh, socks. 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 If you have yeah. wellies or rain boots, always pack those also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Awesome. And if you have a cloak or a cape, not yes. only does it look very festive, but if it is cold, you wrap yourself up in the cloak. Yes. She got saved by me putting a cloak in a box and in, in the luggage one time. I didn't yeah. tell her it was in there. And uh, the the first festival we had, was it the first one or the next one? One of the one of the early ones. We didn't really. We were still kind of newbies. But it, it got so you know, cold. 
what part of 50 degrees don't I understand? <laughs> I say, oh, it's going to be cool. That'll be great. But what I really should be saying is, oh, I need pajamas <laughs> and I need a bathrobe. <laughs> Extra socks. And I should be like, like I live in Florida. 50 is cold. Yes. It's cold. Also, 50 not... at night is cold. 50 during yeah. the day is not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you have clear yeah. skies. Yeah. Right. And remember, you're out in it. Like it could be 50 degrees here, we're in the house, but 50 degrees is 50 degrees all night long in Out the pit. Tent, yeah. <laughs> and well, they, do, you... they do make a thing called a little buddy. Uh, my dad swears by him. It's a propane heater, it mm -hmm. uh, doesn't give off any CO2. It just, I just, I don't know what combustion cycle it uses to achieve that. Don't ask me, I'm not a physicist. Uh, but it's only about the size of a football. It sits in the corner in our standing tent. It, it'll make the whole thing. It could be negative 20 outside. It'll be 80 degrees in the tent. Yeah. It's a dead swerve by me. They used them in Colorado, and they went through a couple of big snowstorms. You know it's basically like a propane-powered heated rock. Water bottle. Yeah. Yep, Not the red too. ones. I'm talking about, you know, your big, you know, Nalgene water bottle. Mm -hmm. Because at night you fill them with hot water and they go in your sleeping bag. Yeah, I, yep. well, because they do that for um, they do that a lot for birds. Because I was reading up on like you know bird first aid. If you've got a sick bird, but it's also like the middle of dead winter, you have to keep them warm, otherwise they'll die. And so what they tell you to do is to take water and to heat up the water however you can, and then put it next to them so that way they get warm and they get the heat source mm -hmm. and they don't die because it's like. 20 degrees or something. Now here's here's another thing. I just things keep popping into my head. I'm sorry that this is going long, but yeah. um so so you're leaving to go to this pagan festival. Now, do you live by yourself? Are there roommates? How are you leaving your home? Take out the trash before you go. Yes. Oh, you're gonna be gone for an extended period of time. Stop your mail delivery. Uh, stop your newspaper if you get the newspaper on the driveway because all of a sudden a pile of newspapers indicates becomes a it becomes an issue. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say what the issue that. is. All of you can infer, but just if you have pets, make plans for them. Mm -hmm. That that goes in the that's part of the whole survival thing. Because I know one year we came back from vacation and the house had gotten hit by lightning and the air conditioner died. Mm -hmm. We had taken out the garbage. There was nothing in the house, but with the AC off, uh, it was an unpleasant <laughs> smell to come home to. Because the litter, the litter pan was in the garage, and at that time we had three cats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was. But that that's what I'm saying. Prepare your house so that when you come home, it will be fresh and clean and inviting right. place to go home. Because I I know people love to live in the woods. People love to camp. People love to get away. What do they love even more than that? Coming, coming home. Coming home. <laughs> oh, that first hot shower. Yes. Down in your own bed. Your own bed. <laughs> the AC humming. Because you found yeah. well, I don't like have to nice. wake up and walk out in the woods tomorrow morning. <laughs> and one other. Oh, that's nice. One other clothing tip. I, you guys, I know, get a kick out of me and my kerchiefs wrapped around the head. But going back to the idea of, you know, protecting your psychic energy, protecting yourself. I swear by the kerchief wrapped around the head made out of silk. Not only is it extremely stylish, <laughs> but it really does make a difference. If you're getting all this energy bounced around at you, mm -hmm. you don't want to be wasting your strength trying to shield yourself 24-7 mm -hmm. at the festival. Right. Well, what's on the head of the every picture of Streganona you've ever seen? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yep. Any any of any of the high functioning super level witches, what's on every one of their heads? Just tied on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I swear by it. Now, one thing I'm bringing up is fans or misters, especially if it's Absolutely. during the summer. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 sky, the, the cooling towels, yeah. And mm -hmm. put house plants outside if possible, or get a friend to take care of them. Your house yeah. plants. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You want to you want to prepare your house just like you prepare your your stuff for because you want to come home to nice, clean, yeah, fresh smelling homes. Really come to a mess or. Yep. I was going to say, too, like, make your bed and everything, too. So yeah. when you come home to a made bed instead of 
kill me. Oh, yeah, it sounds weird, weird, but yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, because yeah, when you come home and your bed's not made, you're just like, well, oh. you're going to come home, you're going to be tired. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You've just had several exhausting days in the woods. You're not going to want to have to clean your house. No, no. no. No, you got laundry to do. You've got enough to do, right? To unpack, <laughs> unpack, get back, get back, and probably work tomorrow. So yeah. Yeah, right. try to try to ease into reality as smoothly as you possibly can. Yes. All right. Yeah. I know. So any good. other uh, Anything else? I'm open. I'm open to any questions. Any anything anybody wants to ask, it's all nothing is taboo here. <laughs>